my name is Adam Shabel, and welcome to Rants Without Pants, which you can watch on shabhead.blogspot.com. This is our special Wisconsin primary election coverage, where I'll be discussing Tammy Baldwin versus the four big boys, Mark Pocan versus Kelda Helen Royce, and a few others. However, I want to first address the horrific mass shooting that occurred at a Sikh temple only a mere f 15 miles away from my house, leaving seven people dead, including the shooter. You all know about it, but let me give you a quick recap. A white supremacist douchebag named Wade Michael Page entered this Sikh temple in Oak Creek, Wisconsin, and just started shooting. Then the president of the temple, Savage Singh, heroically attacked Page with a knife saving many people's lives, but unfortunately did not save his own. The SWAT team then showed up and there was an exchange of gunfire. A police officer shot Page, wounding him. But in the most cowardly move of all, Page put his own gun to his head and took his own life. Page pulling that trigger was like pushing a button on an elevator that took him straight down to hell, where he belongs. It's hot down there, isn't it, Wade? Page was an army veteran who was discharged under less than honorable circumstances. He was also a member of many white power bands, like this one. So besides being an evil, hate-filled bigot, apparently Wade Michael Page also sucked as a musician as well. Let me tell you right now, I have a lot of conflicting and confusing feelings on how I should approach discussing this with you all. So I apologize in advance if I appear scatterbrained more than usual, or if I am brash. People need to know the difference between Sikhs and Muslims. They are two completely different religions that don't have anything to do with each other. After 9-11, there was a huge increase in violence towards Sikhs because dumbasses, ignorant dumbasses, didn't know the difference. Of course, whether there is violence towards Muslims or Sikhs, it's bigotry. Everyone, everyone needs to start respecting other people's religion and understand that yours works for you, but it may not work for everyone else. Sure, some of the customs may seem weird to you, but you know what? Your custom may seem weird to them. I praise, praise, you heard it, praise, President George Bush for his speech he gave after 9-11. And he said this. The terrorists practice a fringe form of Islamic extremism that has been rejected by Muslim scholars and the vast majority of Muslim clerics, a fringe movement that perverts the peaceful teaching of Islam. I ask you to uphold the values of America and remember why so many have come here. We're in a fight for our principles and our first responsibility is to live by them. No one should be singled out for unfair treatment or unkind words because of their ethnic background or religious faith. He could have went a different way with that, but he didn't and I will always, always give him credit for that. But right now, there has been a 755% increase in white supremacy groups since President Obama was elected. One out of six people believe that Obama is a Muslim. Remember when this I happened with John McCain? Uh, believe in, I can't trust Obama. I, I have read about him, and he's not, he's not, he's a, um, he's an Arab. He is not. No, 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 ma'am, no, ma'am. No, ma he's a, he's a, he's a decent family man, citizen that I just happen to have disagreements with, on on fundamental issues, and that's what this campaign is all about. He's not. Thank you. Well, I give McCain credit for setting that dingle brain straight. He also didn't answer the question correctly. He should have said Obama isn't an Arab. But if he was, there would be nothing wrong with that. 
and nothing to be afraid of. That's what McCain should have said. And where did that dingle brain get the idea that Obama was an Arab? He's not black. You know, he has not one shred of African-American blood. He's Arab. There are real consequences to all the fear mongering. In Sheboygan County, in the small town of Wilson, Wisconsin, there was a controversy in the summer of 2010 due to the possibility of a land permit for a mosque. Many in town opposed it. Some were okay with it. We began to think of it as the mosque, and quite frankly, we like the idea. If we worship in any way other than that which is found in this book, the Bible, then we will find ourselves in perdition. Reverend Gregory Welton, longtime pastor at St. John's United Church of Christ in Sheboygan, supports the mosque's right to operate in Wilson. I can't read the scriptures and find any place where Jesus ever told anybody, even when they really didn't agree with them, even when they're nailing him to the cross, I don't hear him ever saying, you can't worship. They're afraid. And when you, you have a combination of not a lot of knowledge and a lot of fear, it gets to be really really difficult. But the only way you deal with fear is through information and education and you replace it with hope. Exactly. Reverend Gregory Welton from St. John's Church is my new hero. That is a smart man that can distinguish between his own religion and the rights of minorities in this country. I want to end this discussion with part of an article written by a Sikh named Simran Jeet Singh. As a Sikh, I believe that people are inherently good. Our faith instills a sense of perpetual optimism, and our traditions teach us to always make the best of a tough situation. Fear and negativity are foreign to our vocabulary. So I am making a conscious decision. I am refusing to accept that human beings are malicious and hateful. And I am rejecting the notion that we need to live in fear. We will never forget the violence of Columbine, 9-11, and the Oklahoma City bombing. And our wounds are still healing from the shooting in Aurora this past month. Both Sikhs and Americans have overcome every challenge they have faced. And I have no doubt they will emerge prosperous again. We should draw from our American and Sikh tradition by continuing to respond with love and compassion. Let us stand together and turn the tragedy in Wisconsin into a turning point for our nation. Okay, the heavy time is over. Let's pull a 180 and discuss the Wisconsin primary elections, which is this Tuesday on August 14th. Go out and vote. Go out and vote! Remember that the voter ID law is not in effect, but the new redistricting is. Anyways, let's start with the four big boys that are all fighting to be the Republican nominee for Herb Cole's Senate seat. So if you're a Republican and believe in the ways of the Tea Party, and also like shitty music, then you should vote for Mark Newman. Wisconsin, we're standing tall and this is what we know. If you want to vote conservative, Mark Newman is the way to go. If you feel that the Republican Party needs a new face, a more handsome face, a face chiseled from the gods, then you should vote for Eric Hofty. Because let's face it, people, that guy is dreamy. Would you like to scale back Medicaid, Medicare, Social Disability, Social Security? Do you think that those I, you said all those programs? Moved. All those programs absolutely, positively need to be reformed. Look, bring it on, guys. If you're a Republican and feel, you know what, no one is really going to vote for Fitzgerald, so let's just move on. If you are a Republican and like to see your senator bombed at Lambeau Field, then you should vote for Tommy. There are 30 teams but only one Packer organization, and that is the greatest football organization ever in America's history. Whereas the Packers are America's real team and will always be winners. I'm just joking around, but this is what I loved about Tommy recently. During the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel editorial board interviews, 
They asked him if it was true that even though he was 70 years old, he did 50 push-ups in the morning and 50 at night. This is how he answered that question. One of those four Republicans will be the Republican nominee to go against this lady. In Wisconsin, we lead the entire nation in paper industry jobs. But China, they lead the world in cheating. And it's costing us jobs in Wisconsin. So I brought Democrats and Republicans together to put sanctions on China now and punish them for making billions breaking trade rules. I love that ad. I was a bit worried that Tammy Baldwin could win. I agree with her on most issues. I think she's a very engaged politician when it comes to meeting with her constituents. But let's face it, she's a gay, liberal congresswoman from Madison. And lots of stereotypes are going to be thrown her away. However, I'm not really that worried about it anymore. She is on the offensive when it comes to talking about unfair trade deals and shipping jobs overseas. These are issues that she is consistent, consistent on with her voting record. I think Wisconsin's going to make the right choice. Then there's the race for Tammy Baldwin's old congressional seat for District 2, which Democrats Mark Pocan and Kelda Helen Royce are fighting for. Kelda Royce has decided to hire Washington insiders to make up commercials like this. What do we really know about politician Mark Pocan? We know he caved in and voted with Scott Walker. What was he thinking? It's time to say no to Mark Pocan. What do we really know about Mark Pocan? Well, let me answer it. What do we really know about politician Mark Pocan? Well, we know he doesn't distort the facts regarding your record like you did with him with this commercial. What do we really know about politician Mark Pocan? We know that during his 14 years in the state assembly, he has been a strong proponent of getting money out of politics from all sides. He authored the Compassionate Care for Rape Victims Act. He was instrumental in setting up senior care. Yes, senior care. And like Tammy, he is a go-getter. He is a true statesman. He's always working on something. I love, love politicians like that. It reminds me of Feingold. What do we really know about politician Mark Pocan? Most importantly, we know he didn't stoop down to your level. Mark Pocan made a conscious effort not to go negative at all, even though he could have easily towards you. I respect that. That's what we need more of. And that is why you, Calda Helen Rice, have failed. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. God bless you. God bless... Actually, one more quick thing. I got a call from the 18th District State Assembly nominee, Jarrett Fields, and I talked to him for 15 minutes, and he was great. I loved his answers. I'm going to be voting for him, so if you're in the Milwaukee area, you should think about looking him up. Anyways, that's all I have for today. God bless you. God bless Wisconsin. And God bless these United States of America. We're standing tall and this is what we know. If you want to vote conservative, Mark Newman is the way to go.